Whoa, what the heck is going on here? Uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Uh, in the last video, I spent three weeks doing Slayer. I made a lot of GP. I, I started with a thousand brimstone keys. I gained 262 brimstone keys in the previous video. And that's where we're starting from today. Except this video is going to be not as much focused on Slayer. It's going to be focused on... Silver. This is so distracting and so intriguing at the same time. One of my main goals is to get as many collection log slots as possible, and Soul Wars has three things to get. There's the pet, and then these two other items, the Soul Cape and the Ectoplasmator. I was gonna say I've never done Soul Wars before in the main game, but when I traded the Nomad I saw I have a little bit of zeal, and then I remembered. I'm pretty sure it's from a bingo that I played in a long time ago, but I mean that was like one or two games and no one really even knew what was going on. I did do a decent amount in the League, but I don't know how much of the knowledge from the League is going to be transferable over to the main game, plus the League was a long time ago as well. I never even played Soul Wars in RuneScape 2 actually. First things first, you cannot bring a cape into Soul Wars, which means I can't bring an assembler, but there is a talk option with the Nomad to ask about ammo to get your ammo picked up for you since you can't bring a cape in, but it looks like I already did that, so we're good there. I gotta check on my main as well uh, to make sure I have that because I'm going to be doing a uh, dolo method, a duo solo method. Oh, it looks like I have to go through the whole tutorial on my main because I've never done it on my main. Okay, got that done on the main and then I'm going to unlock the ammunition pick up on my main as well because I think both accounts are going to be blowpiping. So yeah, I'll try out the game and see how it goes and once I get comfortable over the course of doing this for hours and hours, I'll show you how to do it exactly. But for now, we'll... Uh, We'll just try this and see how it goes. But very quickly, before we get started, most of us spend a lot of time AFKing in OSRS, and while it's nice to spend time mindlessly zoning out to YouTube videos, you could also use some of that time to learn programming using today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is an online self-paced website where you can learn backend development in the Python and Go programming languages. They don't want people to be bored when learning, so they've created their website to be like an RPG where you earn XP, levels, achievements, complete quests, and compete on a global leaderboard. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary salary for backend developers in the US in 2023 was over $100,000. With that said though, the folks over at boot.dev want you to remember this is not a get rich quick scheme. The website starts from the very beginning to teach you the fundamentals and it takes time to build up from there. They believe hands on learning is the best way to learn, so the platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code. Everything is free to read and watch in guest mode, but a paid membership unlocks the hands on content and they offer a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it out and see if it's for you. Click the link in the description and use my code WILDMUDKIP to get 25% off your first month or even your entire first year if you choose the annual plan. And thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring the video. We're gonna end the first game here, or once my main leaves, it's gonna end the game, I think, and we'll see how much zeal I get. 22. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Uh, I forgot to bring, I need to bring a dark bow and telegrab runes too, I forgot. Do I have a dark bow? Or maybe it's in the group storage. I think I got one before, yeah, it's in the group storage, cool. Glad we have that. I was watching No Monkey's video, and he says that you should expect about 19 zeal per game. I didn't say I'm not going to be doing Slayer this video, I'm just not going to make it the main focus of this video, but I am still going to do Slayer this video. <laughs> I have enough zeal already to buy a collection log thing. The Ectoplasmator is 250. And I did some very, very rough calculations. It seems like maybe I could probably be getting like 300 per hour. So this is under an hour to get the zeal for it. So let's confirm by the ectoplasmator. And that is new collection lock slot. And what this does is it's kind of like the bone crusher and the ash sanctifier because it gives you prayer XP when you kill certain creatures, uh, creatures that are listed as spectral, you get prayer XP which is equal to 20% of the monster's health rounded down. This effect does not restore pair points in the catacombs like bones normally would. Oh, interesting. So there's some spectral monsters that also drop bones that you could stack with the bone crusher. I didn't know that. So Anku, he get like extra prayer XP. Uh, here's a long list of all the monsters that count as spectral creatures. Burrows is on there too, by the way. Yeah, it's so fast to get, like probably really should get this early on on an account. Oh yeah, I could have been using it for Muspa the whole time. But yeah, it's a pretty long list. Oh, I can't bring it into Soul Wars. I thought the, the ghosts that you kill, I thought maybe I could get prayer XP from them, but 
You cannot. Also, just remembered, I need to be wearing the salve, not the anguish, because the ghosts that I'm killing are undead. Well, there's like a different group of people now, a bunch of people with pink hats. Wait, the, the group of bobs are like fighting the group of pink hats. Or at least it's a fun story that I'm making up in my head. Whoa, now we have a... Uh, like a red hat team versus the pink hat team versus the bobs versus the Kazard team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are they doing now? They're lined up like... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused. Whenever these accounts move though, it seems like they're moving like one at a time or maybe two at a time or they're all kind of doing one action at a time. So it makes me think that it's not bots, but it's gold farmers. Because if it was bots, they'd all be doing the, the same action at the same time, right? See, it's just one moving at a time. There's a high scores for Soul War Zeal. Right now, it says I'm unranked. I'm gonna log off and we'll refresh. And now, I am ranked in Zeal. Top 100k of everyone in the game. It's been quite a few more hours of Soul Wars. I'm close to 1800 tokens. And there's one more guaranteed log slot I can buy, which is the Soul Cape. I don't have enough zeal for it yet, but I'm actually not gonna buy it. I'm gonna go for the pet from the Spoils of War first before I get the Soul Cape, because if I buy the Soul Cape first, then I would kind of feel obligated to buy a Spoil of War every other game as soon as I can afford one, and that would kind of take a lot of the extra time buying one crate every time I could afford one. Like say I buy the cape first and then I could just save up my points for an hour at a time and then just spam buy a bunch of crates every hour, but if I got the pet on the first crate, then the rest of the points from that hour, couple hours, would kind of go to waste instead of still having a use for me being able to buy the soul cape with. And there's nothing else in the shop here that's important to the account, like I've got all the imbues, GP, food, and potions I could ever need. The only things that matter from here are the pet and the soul cape. And if slash when I get the pet, then I'll finish up getting the points for the cape. Uh, the pet is a 1 in 400 chance for each crate, and since each crate is 30 points, that means the drop rate for the pet is 12k points. If you're doing this method efficiently, it'd be like 380 zeal per hour, or 32 hours for the pet drop rate, but I would estimate that my zeal per hour is about 300, which would make it a 40 hour grind to meet the drop rate. For me personally, if I already have a long grind to do, I don't mind making that long grind take a few extra hours if it means I get to play relaxed for that entire grind because playing efficiently and burning out is less efficient than playing inefficiently. I've still got a thousand zeal to open crates with but I'm not going to open them right now because I'm going to be streaming in a bit and when I stream I'm going to stack up even more zeal and then open a bunch of crates on stream and that'd be even more hype if I got the pet live on stream. This guy's been talking to me in Urdu or is it Hindi? I'm not exactly sure but I've been google translating even Google Translate isn't doing the best job, but I assume this person is like Southeast Asian. And it kind of has me thinking like maybe this whole uh, gold farmer thing, maybe they're not Venezuelan, but they're Southeast Asian. And it's uh, kind of interesting. If that is the case, it's kind of interesting to see the shift from Venezuela to Southeast Asia for the gold farming. Well, both accounts end up on the same side. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was me that someone else doing the same method. Head Condor has reached defense level 97. So what have I had to eat today? I had a corn dog with mayo, then I had another corn dog with mayo, and then I had chocolate peanut butter cheesecake and Reese's cups, and I'm having monster alcohol. And I was wondering why my stomach hurt. And now, now I still don't know why. It's always so interesting seeing the different outfits that they wear and they, they put the same outfits on all their accounts. It's the guys from Curious George, the man in the yellow hat. It's, it's so, I, I want to know what's going on. So there's yellow hat accounts and the blue hat accounts. Maybe that's to keep the accounts more organized so they know which team is, is supposed to be part of which. No, because it's like randomly assigned, isn't it? I'll probably never figure it out. Maybe there isn't a rhyme or reason to it. Maybe maybe the randomness is part of the beauty. If only there is a way in chat to in game to ask what was going on. No. No, that's I'm Okay, leaving on the other account and this will put me at over 2500 zeal. I'm so excited. This is my you made my first uh Big Soul Wars loot crate opening. We have all the Curious George 
guys over here to keep me company. This takes like eight to nine hours to get to 2,500. And I'm gonna open, I'll just do three crates at a time. So let's, uh, let's begin. And no pets, okay. I'm not gonna record the whole thing because it would take too long and take up way too much space on my hard drive. Each game of Soul Wars I do, I get like 19-ish zeal. So it's like two thirds of a crate per game of Soul Wars. Bones. There's a drop table that's one soul rune, one cabbage, and one bone drop. So I just, yeah, I hit that, which I'm sure I'll hit many more times, seeing as that table is one out of 50. Dragon mace, there's the first dragon thing. Oh, and whoa, back to back dragon things, no way. Hitting the dragon drop table is one out of 120. Another dragon. Another dragon, another back-to-back -back dragon. Wait a second, that's not my pet. Did one of these... Oh, Mike. <laughs> okay, dude. The last three crates. Let's see if I can get the pet from the very last one. No. That's a Soul Wars for another eight to nine hours before the next opening. Do a little price check of what's in my inventory, though. I banked a few dragon slash rune items, but yeah, eight to nine hours of loot. Not bad depending on your definition of bad. Watch the bank, the bank value. When I deposit all this stuff, the bank value is gonna shoot up massively with all this time I spent earning all that. <laughs> Ever since Varlamore came out, that really kinda, I was, I had like 60 open slots. I was at like a thousand out of a thousand sixty and then Varlamore came out and it filled up my bank with all of this junk. Did you guys know that there is a fourth hard witchery patch that was added with Varlamore once you do the Ribbing Tail quest? There's a patch right here and I just found this out right now, like a couple, a few months after Varlamore has been out for. So I'm gonna grab my, my rake and get the weeds for the only time be able to get weeds since I have auto weed. Yeah, I'm gonna go and do it. I've, I kind of meant to do this months ago, but I kept pushing it back further and further and I was juggling the same five to 10 bank slots, but GP is for spending after all. So I would like to buy more bank slots. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's me 50 mil. Yep, 50 mil for the next set of 40. I have 121 mil. This will put me down below a 100 mil cash stack, but I think it'll be more than worth it. So let's do that. Confirm, non-reversible, goodbye, 50 more mil. I'm gonna be eating beans and rice for the next couple months, which I'd be doing anyways, but that's besides the point. Oh, look at that, 1100, you know what? 1100 looks a lot cleaner than 1060 being the max. And now for the first time ever, I have now stored more than 1,060 items in my bank. At this point, the next set is gonna cost 100 mil. So I'm gonna have to be very careful about how I uh, delegate my bank space at this point. The banker also says I have no other options to get more bank space. I'm like a freaking bank space addict, dude. There's a new agility shortcut that just came out kind of recently that made a new runecrafting method possible. And I want to make a video tomorrow trying out the runecrafting method, which I haven't even tried. This is my first time doing a trip of this method using the shortcut. I want to try it out tonight, maybe just, I don't know, just chill for a little bit, see how the method is before I actually do this tomorrow. And this agility shortcut that was added requires 79 agility and the diary cape two helps quite a bit or the Kramja gloves three wouldn't be too bad either. And yeah, I want to get comfortable with this method tonight. Oh no, the frogs. <laughs> I want to get comfortable with this method tonight for when I make a video on this tomorrow. I'm kind of curious, the price check of each inventory of nature runes is 21k, and I kind of have unlimited pure essence at this point, <laughs> over 1 million. I almost forgot, before I go to bed, I want to show the range XP per hour that I got. Uh, th I did not do any ranging at all when I was doing Slayer today. This was strictly from doing Soul Wars. I averaged 34.5k XP per hour. The results are in. I did my one hour of runecrafting video today with the new method. I got 67.7k runecraft XP per hour. That's with regular Pure Essence, not Day Alt. And I crafted a bit over 24k nature runes, which has a GE value of about 2.5 mil. Or as an Iron Man, I could sell these to Ali Morrisane for 90 GP each and get a bit over 2.1 mil. 2.1 mil GP, raw GP per hour as an Iron Man. 
I know there is the um, the, like the fact you have to get the pure essence yourself, but when you're at this stage in an account, when you have that method unlocked, you're generally at the point where you probably already have like unlimited pure essence. For the one hour, I went through 7.5k pure essence. It's pretty crazy to think about that. It's gotta be like one of the best raw GP per hour methods for uh, an Iron Man account. Plus the chance for the runecraft pet too. I also hit a, a white stack of nature runes, maybe for the first time on the account. One step closer to getting a white stack of all these runes, not including the combo runes. I mean, I could very easily buy these, maybe. I'll do that one of these days. Probably not today though. I am going back to Soul Wars. Oh, you know, just another day at Soul Wars. I do like how these accounts are labeled though. It is nice and, uh, nice and organized. Always love seeing those whips on the ground. Now I'm ready to go through a full run through of the game and show you how it goes. Once the game ends, both accounts appear in the lobby and they both run into the eastern room. And as I'm running there, the alt is using a locator orb to get down to 1 HP. To challenge each other, each account has to be in a friends chat and ranked as a captain or higher. When the game starts, both accounts are going to be doing the same thing for a while. They'll both pick up potions from the table and I swap the left click to be take 10 and I also highlighted the potion table and highlighted the barrier to exit. Each account should have auto retaliate turned on and quick purr set to pray melee and rigor, which you're gonna turn on right when the game starts and leave it on. Zip a potion on each account before you get to the souls because besides for restoring prayer, it also boosts your combat stats up. Then start attacking the souls. They drop two soul fragments each and you wanna get around 28. Ideally, it would be 12 on your main and 16 on the alts, but it doesn't really matter too much and sometimes I end up going over 20 because I'm not paying the most attention. You can attack a few at a time on each account and let auto retaliate do its thing. Maybe highlight the soul fragments ground items so they're a bit easier to see. Of course, you don't need to have elite void and blowpipe. You can downgrade to whatever you have, like a magic short bow and dehyde. It's just gonna make your zeal per hour a little bit worse. Although I still would highly recommend having a salve EI. I always like keeping my map facing north on both accounts and never switching the direction because it can be very easy to lose your orientation and end up running to the wrong avatar, especially when you're grinding this for long periods of time and not paying too much attention. I think it's a good habit for this grind. Once you get enough fragments, the main will run to the center and the alt will run to either the northwest or the southeast side of the moat, depending on which side it's on. In this case, it's northwest. If the main finishes before the alt, it can stay in the center for a few extra seconds to get a bit of a head start charging the obelisk. On the main, I switch to the dark bow, turn on the spec, and restore prayer. And then the alt does not need to restore prayer since it's about to die anyways. The dark bow spec does a minimum 5 damage per arrow, so I'm using myth arrows because I have over 100k of them from the gauntlet, and there's no point wasting the good arrows. If you don't have a dark bow, I think a magic longbow should work well too. Its special attack does guarantee damage, and it has a tentile attack distance just like the dark bow. Telegrab the soul fragments, the alt drops, and go back to the center and wait for this bar to fill up all the way with your team's color. Telegrab was changed recently to remove the delay after you cast it, which means as soon as you cast it, you can immediately start running to the middle. The obelisk has a different object ID when it's charged, so I highlighted the charged obelisk, which makes it easier to see out of my peripherals when it's fully charged, and I don't have to take an extra tick to double check. On the alt, I click on the exit portal, and that way it kind of prepares me to be able to click yes once the main is done. The main is going to run to the other team side to attack the avatar. I'd recommend you go into the screenshots plugin and turn off death screenshots, because you're going to end up with 15 to 20 screenshots per hour that you probably don't want. According to the Log Hunters Discord, they say the amount of damage you need to do to the avatar, if you turned in 28 fragments, it's 215 damage, or if you turned in 24 fragments, you have to do 260 damage. You also need to make sure that the time left gets to 1210 before leaving. I usually end up not paying attention and doing like 300 damage, and the timer is well below 1210 for me most of the time when I leave too. But yeah, once you get to 1210 and do enough damage, you leave the game on your alt. If you did it right, your main should get 19 zeal, but your alt does not get any zeal because it has to forfeit the match. If you're doing this at max efficiency, it would be 19 zeal and 20 game per hour, so 380 zeal per hour should be the efficient rate, but like I said, I'm getting like 300 zeal per hour because playing efficiently and burning out is less efficient than playing inefficiently. A couple more tips, if you're doing this on lower level accounts, you might find it more zeal per hour to leave as soon as you turn in the fragments rather than trying to fight the avatar. This shouldn't 
ever happen, but if for some reason you find your activity bar getting low, you can sip a potion to bring it back up. If you have a lower agility level or heavier gear and you're running out of run during the minigame, you can grab bandages at the start, which not only restore health, which you shouldn't need, but it restores run too. We were looking at the RuneScape recipe cookbook and there's a short green guy. I was like, wow, that's just green to a guy like me. I'm not much of a show watcher. I'm like, uh, I'm like SpongeBob when he got into fine dining. All he knew was fine dining and breathing. Didn't even know his own name. It's pretty much me with OSRS. All I know is OSRS and breathing. I know my name though, of course. It's Frick. No, no, please, you can call me Frick. Kip was my mother's name. No, this is real. Yeah, this is a, a real picture of me and Spook Dog. It's been another eight to nine hours of doing Soul Wars, and I've once again saved up 2,500 zeal. Currently at 108 Spoils of War opened. Again, it's one out of 400, and I'll be buying and opening three at a time to try and get the pet. I like the way you think. I'll just do one at a time instead. Honestly, that's not a bad idea, just doing one at a time. So I really will waste the, the minimum amount of zeal. I Honestly, I should have been doing that from the start. I don't have to enter the buy X there, the type the three each time. I, yeah, I'm unironically just gonna buy one at a time. <laughs> when you get the pet, I wonder if you get other loot with it too, or if it's just the pet. Probably could easily look it up on the wiki. But who needs looking stuff up when you could try it? No, there's still a chance. I'm only ever one crate away from getting it. <gasps> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, dude. The pets. There we go. Ah. Uh, that was 171 crates. I think I got that one with bones too. So I was about to say, oh, I got bones. But no, I got the pet. Wow. I got the little creator. There's a morph option. Oh. Oh, little creator and little destructor. I guess that's the, the two avatars in the game. Oh, wow. It's uh, below half the drop rate. Dang. Okay, I do still want to get... Uh, still have to get the cape. 2,500 zeal. Currently 659, so it's going to be... Not too much longer. I guess you could say that batch of zeal really zealed the deal for getting the pet. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll drop all this stuff back in here and finish off the last, I don't know, like six, seven hours of Soul Wars. If we take a look at all pets on the account, that is pet number 20. What if it turned out this whole time I was getting zeal on the wrong accounts and I got the pet on the wrong account? I just wasn't paying attention at all. Okay, I'm gonna leave on the alt account and there is exactly 2,500 zeal. Could not have worked out more perfectly than that. So let's go to Nomad and buy the Soul Cape. Gonna confirm that. There is the collection log slot. And then if we go into the collection, mini games, Soul Wars is now green logged. I took off all my other armor so you can see the stats of it. The Soul Cape is the best prayer bonus cape slot item in the game, giving a plus eight prayer bonus. There's an option on it. You could toggle the color between red and blue, whichever one you prefer, and you could store it in the POH. As for where I would use this, I don't know, because I would generally use DPS, like a Infernal Cape or a, a Major Arena 2 Cape or a Assembler, so. I don't know where I'd use this. By the way, it turns out I actually got the pet at 168 Spoils of War. For some reason, the loot tracker says 171, but it was actually 168. And yeah, if you want to see the loot, you can take a good look at it now. Look at the pure essence, 122K. And uh, the seeds, yeah, it's uh, pretty decent relative to like how low requirements you could potentially do this at. My lifetime zeal I ended up with was about 7,800, which means at 300 zeal per hour, that's about 26 hours spent at Soul Wars in this video. 
and I was taking a look at my blowpipe. I did check right at the start. Uh, I pretty much went through exactly 4,000 amethyst darts. That's not as many as I thought I'd go through, but I did go through a lot more scales than I thought I would go through. I filled it up all the way with scales right at the start. Uh, so 16.3k all the way down to 3k. So I went through a bit over 13k scales. For the unofficial GIM high scores on Temple OSRS, I was looking at the zeal and, uh, well, once I, I haven't logged off yet and refreshed, but once I do, I have seven about 7.8k zeal, which means I would be ranked 7 as an individual for all two-man GIMs in the game. All in all, though, the low creator pet is one of the fastest pets on average to meet the drop rate for. If I sort by uh, efficient hours for each of the pets uh, to meet the drop rate, it's pretty far, very close to the bottom at 32 hours. Right here, there's only a few that are below it. It is still kind of nice to get lucky with this one though because I feel like I wasn't really gaining that much XP. It was like 35k range XP per hour, but it's like on a range is kind of a zero time skill. So it's kind of nice to get lucky with this one so I didn't feel like I was wasting as much time not progressing the account. Because while the supplies are nice, the supplies aren't really necessary at this stage on the accounts. They don't really help the progress too much. But yeah, if you want to keep me company when I live stream, you can come to twitch.tv slash wild underscore mudkip and if you want to keep up to date with my duo teammate spook dogs road to max i will have her most recent video linked below in the description thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and to all you gingers out there hope this video wasn't too offensive thank you for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time